This is Christopher Moldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today, I'm going to do a book review of A Hero Born, Legends of the Condor Heroes, Volume 1. So here's a, the book looks like, if you haven't seen it before. There you go. Okay. So next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat, Volumes 27 and 28, an anime review for Shimonetta, and a movie review for Disney's Christopher Robin. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments, and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So, uh, the way that this can work is I'm going to give pretty much just the synopsis of the book. Um, so, just briefly, and then I'm going to give my thoughts and, and like a more detailed look into the book at the characters at the overall journey some of the themes and whatnot that goes on in the book so um let's uh recap the synopsis this is a uh, this book is translated from uh from chinese english by anna homewood the author is jin yang which is the uh, pen name of lewis chow uh cha <laughs> so it takes place in china of 1200 a.d uh, the Song Empire has been invaded by its warlike Jurchen neighbors from the north. Half its territory and its historic capital lie in enemy hands. The peasants toil under the burden of the annual tribute demanded by the victors. Meanwhile, on the Mongolian steppe, and just to tell you, if I mispronounce things, which I will, I, I'm really bad at pronunciation, so just bear with me there. Uh, a disparate nation of great warriors is about to be united by a warlord whose name will endure, endure for history, for eternity, Genghis Khan. Guo Jing, son of a murdered Song patriot, grew up with Genghis Khan's army. He is humble, loyal, perhaps not altogether wise, and is fated from birth to one day confront an opponent who is the opposite of him in every way, privileged, cunning, and flawlessly trained in the martial arts. Guided by his faithful uh, Sifus, the seven heroes of the south, Guo Jing must return to China to the Garden of the Drunken Immortals in uh, Xiaoxing to fulfill his destiny. But in a divided land driven by war and betrayal, his courage and his loyalties will be tested at every turn. So before we get into my thoughts, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismodong.com and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Also, do you like action, adventure, fantasy? Then buy my book, The Monster Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for just $4.99 via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Um, while they don't have the crazy martial arts action that, uh, that Legends of the Condor Heroes has, I, I, I do use certain ideas from martial arts and, and whatnot when do when writing the action scenes for the mustard prints actually um there's, there's a lot of action scenes on there um as well not to compare it to this book of course they're quite different <laughs> but uh links to buy it will be provided on the page description so uh let's get into the th my thoughts uh let, let's go deeper into the story this story kind of goes into three parts there really is there's pretty much um, before when Guo Jing and Yang Kang are still in their mother's belly, you know, are, are still in their mother's bellies and, um, you know, not born yet, obviously. Uh, so you kind of more start out with Ironheart Yang and Sky Fairy Guo, and then from there, then you get into Guo Jing a bit you do get introduced to the seven heroes or seven freaks of the south um from there the second half kind of goes more with go jing and in the mongol where he's in like the mongolian step i think it's steppe um or steep i'll go steep the mongolian steep uh and that's where you get introduced like genghis khan and whatnot and then the third like act it's pretty much he goes to back to china and then you find out a, a lot of things get introduced to a couple new characters at the end but um yeah you know when we start out with the story i mean 
it is Ox Village getting attacked. Well, it starts out with Sky Fairy Guo and um, Ironheart Yang meeting uh, Ku Kui Chuji, who is the of the Eternal Spring and, and a very powerful Taoist. Um, yeah, he's from a Taoist sect, of um, and, and is very good at martial arts. You know, Ox Village gets attacked. Um, Justice Duan kidnaps Li Lily Li, who is the uh, mother of Guo Jing, while Charity Bao gets saved by um, Wan Yang Hong Li, who she treated wounds for um, earlier. And you'll find out at the end of the book that that was actually just one big ruse. And it just kind of starts there. And, and you know, the the characters like Sky Fairy Guo, uh, a lot of them they're they're pretty strong characters. Um, I wouldn't say they're very deep per se. You know, like we know Ironheart Heart Yang, um, he's a master of the spear, um, and, and they both fight uh, against the invaders. And Sky Fairy Guo gets killed. And presumably Ironheart Yang gets killed. You find out at the end he does not actually get killed and actually survives. Uh, Justice Duan, who... And, and it goes to show some sort of like power relationship too because it's like you have a guy like a Justice Duan who is in a position of power, but he's a coward. He's a kidnapper. Um, he's deceitful. He uses other people. He uses his own family. He uses like his uncle to try and hide out and whatnot. Um, and really, it is just a pretty despicable. Uh, he's pretty much like the villain uh, in, in the beginning. Uh, Lily Lee manages to escape though, and ends up in the Mongolian steep. Uh, Charity Bao gets taken away by. Yan, uh, Wan Yan Hong Li, who's actually the sixth prince, Prince of Zhao. Um, and it, it kind of, you kind of don't see or hear about Charity Bao uh, later on. It, it kind of just shifts into Guo Jing and Lily Li. And then Charity Bao just kind of goes in the background. Arnard Yang is presumed dead, and Sky Fairy uh, Guo is dead. Uh, Ku Chu Ji is still around, and it's kind of cool because um, we do meet around this time and entering this like this the second act of the book. We are introduced to the Seven Freaks of the South. Um, there's seven of them: Zhang Ashang, who dies. In, actually dies in battle uh, later on. He's in love with uh, Jade Han. Kei Zan is the flying bat. He's blind. He's known as Big Brother. He's the oldest of the seven freaks of the South. He's kind of like the leader. Uh, he's using, he uses the flying devil nuts as weapons. There's Quick Hand Zhu Kong. He's cool. He's like this quick thinking, sleight of hand guy. He's actually really strong. Though. He actually can fight with an iron fan. And he has knowledge of pressure points. We also see like Ryder Han, who is just great. Well, he's super short. I think he's only like three feet. Great with the horse. Woodcutter Nan. Fights with an iron tip shoulder pole. He's really strong. And he's one of the primary teachers of uh, Guo Jing. Guo Jing is more attuned to his fighting style early on. Uh, Gildan Quan, who fights with a spear. He, he's kind of like something of like a master of making deals in the marketplace and Jade Han who's the youngest I think the only woman of the seven freaks of the south who's a maiden of the UA sword uh, technique and also Zhang Shang is in love with Jade Han um, we do get introduced to them actually um, Wan Yan Hung Li sees them at first but doesn't really he just kind of observes them um, but they actually meet up with uh, Ku, Ku Chu Ji, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they meet up with him. 
And, and that's where they devise a contest between him and Kuchiji and the Seven Freaks of the South. They meet at the Garden of the Immortal. Um, it's called the Garden of the Drunken Immortal of the G Drunken Immortals, uh, and Zhao Sheng. Uh, they actually do get in a fight. Uh, uh, the Seven Freaks actually fight against them, and it's pretty cool. They don't they don't die. No, no one dies, but um, you know everyone's pretty badly badly damaged. And they actually fight in a uh, I think they fight in a temple. I, I'm actually going by memory for a lot of the stuff here, just to tell you. Um, I like the Seven Freaks of the South though. Once they actually they once they eventually meet Go Jing, you know, they're they're good people. Um, they've always seemed to have Go Jing's back in a sense. Uh, individually, like some of them stand out more than others. Uh, for example, like Zhang Sheng eventually dies. Um, they run. They go up this one hill. And they run into, they see a bunch of skulls being stacked up in a certain way. And then, then that's like, uh-oh, like, we're in the presence slash territory of Cyclone May and Hurricane Chin, who are both the master of the Nine Yen Skeleton Claw. They can actually, like, with their, with their hands, they can pretty much, like, pierce their skull if they wanted to um so but before th like they actually fight uh we do get to know a little bit more about uh Go Jing Go Jing once he's in uh the Mongolian steep he doesn't actually meet up with uh Genghis Khan early on he's just kind of him and Lily Lee are just there trying to survive and it isn't until an episode where this one I, he was actually an enemy to uh, okay at this point I'll call him uh, Temujin uh, who will become Genghis Khan uh, Jeeb actually becomes injured in a battle against uh, Temujin's men and then what happens is that Gu Jing and you get to really find out a lot about Guo Jing here, you know. Um, he's a really nice kid. <laughs> like, you know, he sees someone in need uh, of help and, and helps him out, even though he's a stranger. When Jeeb tries to get him something in return, now as, as like gold or something or something of, of great value, Guo Jing actually just refuses, and, and it's just and he learned from his mother, you know, like. Pretty something paraphrasing. It's pretty much like, like, don't accept gifts for something for just common, common decency. Pretty much, and it spoke a lot about Guo Jing and the type of person he is. Um, he actually protects Jeeb um, as best as he can. I think he he tries to hide him. And whatnot until like Temujin's men, Temujin and his men, uh, uh, go and look for him. Jeeb actually comes out, beats one of Temujin's like commanders, and then Jeeb ends up joining uh, Temujin and, and pretty much brings Gu Jing along. And that's how Gu Jing encounters uh, Temujin. And also, he, he becomes friends with uh, with Timogen's son and daughter as well. So it's really cool. Uh, Timogen himself, he's one. You know, he, he actually becomes Genghis Khan. It's it's pretty interesting to see how how it kind of works. Um, you know, he he wasn't. He's not this like Attila the Hun you know, barbarian type guy. He, he, he actually had a sense of duty. I mean, his men were the first ones up. You know, first ones up, last ones to leave type type of guys. He's, he, he cares about, like, you know, not oversleeping, just 
being punctual and um, having a sense of order, you know, displaying strength. Um, there's a, there's a um, a situation where one of his men, one of his old his sworn brother and ally, Jamuka, um, actually betrays him, and you know, Jamuka pleads with his life. Uh, after the situation happens, Temujin comes out on top, pleads with his life. Jamaka is just like, look, like, please let me die in a certain way. And Temujin, you know, having some level of compassion, you know, allows him to die in a way. I, I believe where he doesn't want to bleed or something to that nature. Um, so it, it was just really great. You know, you got to see the humanity of the one who'd become Genghis Khan, who would event, like, him and, uh, uh, you know, his son Kublai Khan, um, and the Mongolian Empire would more or less rule the world, but he isn't just some, like, warmongering, you, you know, some, some warmonger. And, and I thought that was really cool. He got to know a little bit about him. Um, loyalty is a big thing with him. Um... Uh, He's not, you know, he's a lot more compassionate and uh, than, than you think he is. That's the thing. Um, it's kind of funny. He doesn't have much interaction with the Seven Freaks of the South. It's a really weird thing because they kind of just hang out on the Mongolian steep. <laughs> and it's just, um, and they just kind of uh, train Go Jing and Genghis Khan just kind of lets him, you know. Um, going back to um, Cyclone May and Hurricane Chin. Um, so, they're pretty much, they, they, they meet Guo Jing for like the first time and tell Guo Jing if he wants, uh, if he wants the Seven Freaks of the South to train with them, then go up this, like go up this hill. And, um, that's where they they run into Cyclone May and Hurricane Chen. Um, Hurricane Chen actually gets killed by Gu Jing during a fight um, against the Seven Freaks of the South. He actually ends up going up the hill and wanting to get trained by these by the Seven Freaks of the South. Or with Hurricane uh, with Cyclone May, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe she gets she gets blinded. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, by um, I think by the devil nuts. She gets it. I think she she gets hit by the devil nuts. It's a concerted effort by the seven freaks of the south. So I come in, will actually come back stronger and more vengeful though later on. Later on, but they manage to kind of just outwit her so they don't have to fight against her. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing because um, there's a lot of training. In the second act, where pretty much they're training Guo Jing, and he gets a lot of teachers here. Um, there are also a lot of there are some villains here. Uh, Sengum, who's the son of the Ong Kong, who pretty much has bitterness towards uh, Temujin. Ong Kong Khan is the sworn brother of Temujin's father, and during that time, it's kind of like the the ruler of of the tri Mongolian tribes at that point, and then and then you have like Tusaka, who's the son of Sengum, who bullies Guo Jing and gets betrothed um, to um, uh, I forgot her name, but it's uh, Temujin's one of Temujin's daughters. Um, so, uh, eventually that whole incident, though, with Sengum and Tisaka kind of gets resolved and, and whatnot, and then, um, pretty much Genghis Khan or Temujin becomes Genghis Khan, you see that, but, um, like I said, um, Guo Jing during this time gets a lot of instructor, instructors, he has the Seven Freaks of the South, but then also, um, 
uh, Scarlet Sun Mai Sun Mayu, who teaches internal kung fu to Guo Jing, um, helps him out as well. Uh, what happens is we get, first get introduced to the Condors, like in the title of the, of the book. Um, it's the Condor Heroes, and in this case, the thing with the Condors is uh, are that like they are animals that can fight that can also that know martial arts and can teach martial arts and um what happens is i mean, they fight and i think guo or jeeve i forgot someone actually shoots one down actually and what happens is for whatever reason guo jing has to climb up the hill where the condors were and like um Psycho, Psycho May ends up being up there as well. But um, on top of the mountain, uh, Scarlet uh, Sun Mayu ends up teaching breathing techniques to Guo Jing, who's also uh, one of the Taoist sects, uh, similar to uh, Kui Chu Ji. Um, so, like I said, he gets a lot of instructors and, and whatnot, and, and there's a lot of training before the third act. And once we get into that third act, uh, you know, we, we're introduced to Lotus Huang, who Guo Jing thinks actually at first is a boy, turns out to be a pretty much like this beautiful girl. Um, it's unknown who her master is. So he seemingly, it, it seems like Guo Jing has a thing for Lotus Huang. Uh, we also get to see Jade Sun Wang Chu Yi. Uh, who is the Iron Foot Immortal, who pretty much befriends Guo Jing. And then, so the third act is really interesting because now we get to know how the beginning of the story kind of ties into the third act, or the end of the story. Um, pretty much what happens is they run... Lotus Wong and Guo Jing run into Mu Yi. This guy named Mu Yi who travels with a, his daughter Mercy Yu. And what happens is that whoever can defeat Mu Yi in battle gets to be betrothed her. So what happens is this one really arrogant like princely fellow one young king ends up beating Mercy Yu, but does you know rejects the be, rejects being betrothed to Mercy Yu, and then one young king king fights against Guo Jing. Okay, here's the thing. It turns out that one young king is actually Yang Kang, the sworn brother to Guo Jing, but. Wan Yang Kang does not know the truth of his birth. Um, he's also led to believe that his father is Wan Yang Hung Li. Uh, so, we have that going on. We also get to see the consort, who's um, the mother of Wan Yang Kang. And it turns out the consort is actually Charity Bao. It also turns out that Mi Yu is Ironheart Yang, who is the father of Yang Kang and the husband of Charity Bao. And then it also turns out that Wan Yang Hung Li pretty much set up this ruse where he acted like he was injured so that Charity Bao would help him. And so that, you know, I guess him and Charity Bao would be, I guess, closer in a sense. And I believe it was Wan Yang uh, Hung Li that set up the attack, ultimately set up the attack on Ox Village. So that you find all of that out in the third act. Um, it's really interesting because... Wan Young Kang pretty much doesn't know the truth of his birth. He almost kills 
Ironheart Yang, his father, not knowing that that's his father. And then, um, it, um, he's just kind of angry. Like, the, the fight, the fight doesn't actually happen. Uh, that was one of the more disappointing things in the sense that, like, this big fight that happened, that's supposed to happen at the Garden of the Drunken Immortal doesn't actually happen. Um, so, because it kind of builds up to that. You're, tra you know, he's training for it and whatnot, and it doesn't happen. And that's one of the more unfortunate things that happens here. Um, you do have Guo Jing and Lotus Wang uh, infiltrating, like, the main castle. Uh, there's some pretty bad dudes in the main castle. Uh, they didn't stand out too much. But, um... Yeah, it ends up with it. Pretty much ends with Ironheart Yang running away with. If I'm not mistaken, I think he runs away with Charity Bao. If I'm not mistaken, uh, and, and like Guo Jing, and it it kind of just ends on this impasse. So, uh, uh, that's kind of like the bigger story and, and all the characters. Um, the twist at the end was interesting one, one thing that has to be said about this book though I don't know if it's a translation issue or what not but um, I wouldn't say it's it's fun to read but I wouldn't say it's that complex like it's written with that much complexity they kind of need a lot of time and it could be a translation issue I don't really know but it like all of that stuff, all of these twists at the end, the the narrator just kind of tells you, oh hey, uh, Mu Yi is really Ironheart Yang, and Wang Wan Young Hong Li made up this whole elaborate plan. It's like the, it it just kind of explained to us by the narrator, just kind of in a blase type of manner. It isn't like one character is talking to another. It's not like they're talking to Wan Young Hung Lee and he, he reveals his plans or something like that. It, it's just that the narrator just kind of ends up telling you the truth. And, and it, it kind of caught me off guard in a sense because I, I just... I, I would have thought there they would have had a more... I guess sensical way that fits more into the story of what's actually happening than just the narrator telling us, hey, look, this is what happened. Oh, hey, this is who these people really are. You know, it's like, hey, the consort is really Charity Bow. Oh, okay, cool. Like, thanks, narrator. It, it kind of, in, in that sense, it kind of takes you out of the story, which I didn't really like. But the twists at the end were, were pretty interesting. Um, the fact that it ends on an impasse is kind of strange, though. Because it, it just kind of ends where, like, they escape the castle and book's over. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I kind of want to read the next one now. You know, I want to see what happens with all these characters. You know, like, one young king. You know, it's like... He doesn't know the truth of his birth. Is he going to find out the truth? What, what did, What's he going to do? Guo Jing, what, what happens to him? You know? He's hanging out with Lotus Wang. We don't... Lotus Wang actually is uh, a good martial artist herself. And you don't know who her master is. She does not reveal who it is. Um, we don't actually know what happens to Ku uh, to Chu Ji. Uh, there are some questions here because... Um, Wan Young Kang was actually practicing some arts, some martial arts that were not a part, that were not a part of a Ku Ji's like skill set. So, you know, there, there it does leave some unanswered questions as far as like, you know, the backstories and, and whatnot. Like I said, um. Like I said, the way it's written, I, 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 I'm of the, the opinion that you want to, 
you want to show don't don't tell you know what I mean if if a person's an idiot don't just tell don't just have the narrator tell me he's an idiot you know show me the idiotic things that he's doing to tell me that he's an idiot you know for example um, they don't do a lot of that in this book I mean like I said it's fun to read the monster arts are great um, I mean it, it's it's quite you know, fantastic, you know, it's all fantasy, obviously, so it's not going to be, it's grounded in some levels of reality, they, they do attack pressure points, there is some sense of movement, um, and whatnot, but, you know, there, there's some pretty fantastical attacks and whatnot, um, but otherwise, the fight scenes are a lot of fun, I mean, it's really cool, they're, they're still, nonetheless, still quite detailed, and whatnot. Um, so, in, in that sense, it, it was pretty engaging. It, it's a really fun book. They call it like the next Lord of the Rings. I wouldn't go that far. There are certain things that I really like, though. Nonetheless, uh, I do like that it does tie into history. Um, you know, with the Song Empire, the the Mongolian Empire, and whatnot. Um, I think that's really cool. It, it got to let you see a different side of uh, Genghis Khan. I don't know if that's based on reality, his personality at least, as shown in his book. I would imagine that some of the, the settings and whatnot, um, and some of just the tribal hierarchies and, and whatnot, were closer to reality, it, it, it seems like. Uh, I'd be surprised if a lot of that stuff's just made up. Um, so, yeah, you know, like I said, it was it, it was really fun. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to what's next. You know, there there is that budding relationship with Go Jing and Lotus Huang, but like, you know, Temujin's daughter also has a thing for Gu Jing too. But it really does look like Gu Jing and Lotus Huang are gonna end up together. I'm curious to see what. Wang Kang will do next, um, his next, uh, you know, attack, or his next, his next moves, pretty much, and, and want Wan Young Hung Lee, because, like, he wants to take over the Song Empire, um, he's getting people to help him achieve that end, and then you have the rise of Genghis Khan, and as we know, at the very end, um, Genghis Khan's going to win <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. Then Kublai Khan's going to come up as well. I think Kublai Khan was actually just briefly mentioned, just his name, but he, you know, um, we don't get to know much else uh, uh, about him um, at this point. So, um, I, I would recommend this book, you know. Uh, letter grade. I, I don't know if it, you know. It, it's kind of weird. It, everything's subjective, you know, because like, like I said, I don't think it's written as well as it could be. Like I said, I think it could have described. Th you know, it could have showed me more, and not just tell me things straight out. And like I said, that really, t especially near the end, with all the twists and, and the narrator just, you know, just telling me what the twists are. <laughs> Um, it really kind of took me out uh, of the story in a sense. Um, so it's really hard to give a grade because I, I actually read this thing quite quickly and uh, engulfed it pretty much. I, I was really into it, you know. <laughs> so, like, and, and in that sense, if, you know, it would be an A, but if you want to look at some object, objective things, you know, obviously, like I said, um, show don't tell thing um they do get into the characters quite a bit there's a lot of characters um you get a general idea of what the characters are like especially like Gu Jing which, which he's like the most important character anyways so you know the characterization you know I think the characters are fun at, at least they're, they're pretty memorable so I'd give it like a B plus A minus as far as a letter grade. So that's all for 
that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this book review. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skit Beat Volumes 27 and 28, an anime review for Shimonetta, and a movie review for Disney's Christopher Robin. Thank you, and until next time.